Canada's Anne Mominy from Montreal competing in her third Olympics. And she's on. I left the Olympic Village and then I went around Australia for two weeks. She needs nine and a half for the Olympic gold medal. Then I got back. I did a week of media in Montreal, a week of media in Toronto, a week in New York, uh, and now I'm I'm back here and I'm still doing media. And just completed a front. And Malmany had trouble catching her breath last fall. With two Olympic medals in diving, she went from the top of the tower to the top of the world. And Malmany. The distractions helped her forget about another preoccupation: what to do with the rest of her life. Momini is 26 years old. She started articling in January with a big Montreal law firm. She admits to a big fear. To not be good at what I'm going to do in my next career. I'm, I'm really scared of that. I can't imagine not being good at something. So uh, that's, that's really what, I, what I'm worried about. Because ultimately, I'm, I'm the type of person, if I'm not good at it, I'm not going to like it. First Canadian in history to win a tower medal. Uh, maybe I'll adjust, you know. Um, I don't expect to be the best in the world at being a lawyer, but I expect to be very competent, you know. Um, so we'll see what happens. Score! France Saint Louis. France Saint Louis understands why Malmany is fearful. Saint Louis is one of Canada's top female hockey players. She retired after the 1999 World Championships at the age of 41. Even though she'd been teaching for 15 years and had a job to go to, the end of her playing career floored her quite unexpectedly. She says she's been depressed for more than a year and is now in therapy. Well, a year ago, I went to see uh, one of my friends. She's a doctor, and every day I was crying. And I was going to work, and I'm like, I don't know what happened. And I said to her, I said, uh, she said, do you cry that often? And I started to cry. So then she said, yeah, I think yeah, there's something wrong with you. And when you step out of that realm of being an athlete, it's like, who are you? St. Louis was looking for help. She attended this workshop on career transition in Calgary last November. It was sponsored by the Coaching Association of Canada and Athletes Can, a group that represents elite amateur athletes. St. Louis says she now realizes that her teaching was just something that permitted her to play hockey and wasn't really a career. The hockey is what made her get up with excitement every day. She hasn't found anything to replace it. So it's pretty hard because you feel like you're starting from uh, zero, so that's how I feel. I feel like this, so, but I have to, you know, do what I uh, did all my life, work hard. I'm a hard worker. It's just that huge piece. It's like cut me in half, that piece of me have now, is now over. Was your retirement from sport voluntary? So Judy Goss is a sports psychologist. She works side, with the National Sports Centers. She says St. Louis isn't the first athlete, amateur or professional, to have trouble coping with career transition. Guy Lafleur first retired in 1984, but he became depressed. He says he couldn't replace the physical high of practice and competition. He made a comeback four years later, first with the New York Rangers, then with the Quebec Nordiques. Goss says the problem of transition is essentially the same whether you're a pro or an amateur. But if there's a difference, it's over money. She says many amateurs finish their careers in debt, putting extra pressure to make decisions quickly. About a third of athletes take maybe one or two months to make the transition, figure out what they're doing. And that's not get over all the feelings, but get back into the swing of things, we might say. Another third would say six months to a year. And then an the last third would be over two years. The Olympic closing ceremonies often open the door to transition problems. First of all, Goss says everyone who takes part in the games, from the athletes to the coaches to the volunteers, experiences a letdown. It's called post-Olympic depression syndrome. It can last from a couple of days to a couple of months. Second, many athletes choose to retire after an Olympic competition. Even if it seems like a natural time to retire, the timing could actually make the transition more difficult. Boucher on the outside. Gaetan Boucher was fast on the ice, but not in his transition. In fact, 13 years after quitting, he still has regrets about ending his career. He did it! Look at Boucher, that's a gold medal! I think you, you remain an athlete, you know, for a long, long time after. 
uh, in my case, because I mean, if I could, I would still be skating. Gaetan Boucher isn't skating anymore. Instead, he's helping design skates for other people to skate in. He works for Bauer Nike at their factory near Montreal, but longs for the stimulation of a big race. He is flying. Boucher was one of the stars of the Sarajevo Olympics, winning three medals, two of them gold. But he never fully recovered from an ankle injury after those games. He wasn't close to the podium at the Calgary Games in 88. He says the injury forced him to retire after Calgary. I didn't want to stop skating. I was kind of forced to, to stop skating. And uh, it made it a lot harder. There are a number of things that affect how an Olympic athlete will deal with the transition at the end of a career. Does the athlete leave the sport on his or her terms and have major goals being accomplished? Did the athlete prepare for the transition? And does the athlete have a new focus in life? And is there significant support from family and or friends around the athlete? Sports psychologists believe they can help the athlete deal with those factors, especially if they can get to the athlete early enough. Penny Werthner continuing to lead. Penny Werthner was once a middle distance runner. She competed at the 76 Olympics in Montreal. She retired after Canada's boycott of the 1980 Olympics in Moscow. So it's just finding that balance. Werthner is now a sports psychologist, helping athletes deal with transition. She did some of the early research in Canada on the subject. She was also at the Calgary conference. She says the sooner an athlete starts preparing, the better. The challenge is that they don't want to think about the end of their career. And personally, as a sports psychologist, working with them in terms of performance, I mean, I understand why they don't want to, and I don't, you know, that's the focus is on you know, what's going to happen at the next Worlds and how I get there in the best shape and the best mental state. And this is Robert Forget. There are sad stories of athletes who had no idea a transition was coming and their lives were never the same. Robert Forget was a Quebec high jumper. He was touted to be a star of the 1976 Montreal Olympics, but he fizzled after suffering a back injury. He continued to compete until Canada boycotted the 1980 Olympics. His former teammates say he took it hard. He developed addiction problems and suffers from depression. He's only been able to hold a series of short-term jobs and now lives on welfare. And what's it going to do for your confidence? Goss works regularly with elite swimmers in the Toronto area. It's her job to make sure these athletes can cope at the end of their careers. She says they're going to experience things they never have before. Just a really a feeling of being lost, not having, you know, losing your bearings, not knowing what to do. Um, it, it's really a, emotions are confusion, um, which they're not used to having. I mean, sport is pretty clear. If you want to excel, you need to do this, and this is what is, you know, the goal. Goss says most athletes get through their transition, but it takes a lot of work. When sport is over, there's very little for you to derive self-worth from. And that's one of the biggest things is, who am I now? If I'm not a swimmer, if I'm not a runner, if I'm not a volleyball player, who am I? You go through kind of an identity crisis. Uh, I know I did, for sure. I was, uh, for 20-something years, I was Neil Marshall, the speed skater. 6-2! And now he's Neil Marshall, the coach in Calgary. He retired after the 1998 Winter Olympics. He worked for a year making furniture. He says during that time, he was depressed. I think I was angry a lot of the time, uh, frustrated. Uh, I just didn't feel calm. You know, I, I mean, when you're an athlete, it's very clear what you're doing day to day. And, and once I stopped skating, that was really unclear. And uh, I didn't have a plan. And so from day to day, it's sort of, you're a little more you know, lost, I think. Anne Mulmany does have a plan. She worked hard to prepare for her second career. But she's still not sure about making the jump. She hasn't ruled out returning for the next Olympics in Greece in 2004, and she's thinking about more studies at the graduate level. It's difficult for athletes because they don't get that constant, um, constant reinforcement of what you did today was good. I mean, for Anne, you know, she dives off the tower. She knows when she rip, rip enters a dive. She doesn't need really even her coach to say that was good. She knows it. She gets that immediate feedback. Um, whereas, you know, being a lawyer, I mean, I don't know if she's a criminal attorney, but it'll take, you know, she'll work for many days, months, and really probably get no feedback. 
and that's a real hard thing to deal with. Momini has received more positive feedback than most athletes, which could make the contrast even tougher. She's aware there may be a dip ahead and is trying to prepare. Stay busy. Uh, I've been doing media for the past four weeks and it's all about the sport and the medal, so it's hard to go down right now. But there's no time, like I've, I sort of did this subconsciously, I'm sure. There's no time for me to get depressed. Like, I'm going to start my, my articling in January, and like, there'll be no time for that, you know, and I'm the type of person that, you know, if you have to sink or swim, I'll usually swim. I mean, I would love to go back and be an athlete again. Love it. Um, so I'm not sure you ever lose that core feeling, but at some point along the way, in sort of a year to two year process is kind of, a time frame I put on it, you do start to become something else. And so when someone says, what do you do? You start to say, I do this, as opposed to, I was an Olympic athlete. But that takes time and, you know, you can't rush it.